and grace uh, and the opportunity to be here in his presence and we believe that God has good things in store for us. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord bless you. I welcome all of you. Um, those of you who are watching us online, we welcome you to today's service. May the Lord bless you wherever you are and may this service be a great blessing to you today and those of us who are here uh, welcome you too and thank you for being available God bless you we may be seated in the Lord's presence I'd like us to turn to our Bibles now, the book of Joshua, the book of Joshua chapter 3. The book of Joshua and chapter 3. We are going to read verse 1 to verse 5. The Bible says these words. Early in the morning, Joshua and all the Israelites set out from Shittim and went to the Jordan, where they camped before crossing over. After three days, the officers went throughout the camp, giving orders to the people. When you see the ark of the covenant of the Lord your God and the Levites, the priests, carry it, you are to move out from your position and follow it. Then you will know which way to go since you have never been this way before. But keep a distance of about a thousand yards between you and and the ark. Do not go near it. Joshua told the people, consecrate yourselves, for tomorrow the Lord will do amazing things among you. Father, we pray that you bless your word to our hearts. We pray that you will open our ears to hear, our minds to understand. And our hearts to receive. And I pray that this word will be a blessing to us today. And we pray that you will lead us by your spirit. And you will cause us to know your ways. So that we may walk in them. And find rest for our souls. We pray for all those who are participating in this service from near and from far that every one of them will receive their portion this afternoon. In the wonderful name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, we pray. And we say a good amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Um, the setting of the story that we are reading here is... 40 years after the Israelites left Egypt. And uh, they had been roitering in the desert for 40 years, going round and round in circles. And uh, the Bible talks about them moving 
from Shittim to Jordan. There was a specific place called Shittim that they had camped possibly for a long time. And uh, Shittim is a kind of a tree, a thorn tree that usually grows in the desert places. It's usually not very tall uh, because in the desert there is scarcity of water and uh, the soil is very sandy. It's a tree that grows in hard and, uh, hard and harsh environment and uh, doesn't grow to be very big. Uh, although it is a hard wood, it is a very hard type of wood that actually is the kind of tree that God asked the Israelites to use in the making of the Ark of the Covenant. It was made of shitty wood. It's amazing that God would ask the Israelites to use this wood, and not possibly cypress. Uh, Cypress was available those days But it was available in areas of Tiles and Sidon Which were very far away uh, from the Israelites Um, Possibly just telling us that God uses the things that are around us To shape us And sometimes the things around us reflect us Through this, the life of the Israelites were hard and challenging, difficult because of living in the desert these 40 years, that they had become more of um, desert dwellers. But you know, no situation on earth is permanent as far as God is concerned. Life is a journey. We are always moving from a point A to a point B. And once we are done with point B, God will take us to a point C, and so on and so forth. And it is important to understand the way God works, uh, that the will of God is that we should always be on the move. And for that reason, the fact that uh, Shittim was more of a reflection of what the Israelites were going through in their lives, uh, a time came when God said it's time to move from Shittim and they camped by the river Jordan. Um, at the river Jordan this time Moses was gone. Aaron had already died also. And uh, the elders that were Uh, the leaders during the time of the exodus when they were leaving Egypt they had all died except Joshua and Caleb all those who had been 20 years and above um, they they had died in the desert now they are children those who are uh, under 20 years when they left Egypt and again those who had been born during the desert pilgrimage. They are the ones now. So it was a very, very young generation of people who are possibly below 60, most of them. And uh, these were the people that now they are moving from Shittim to the river Jordan. That also tells you that in the course of time, there are many people that will fall away. But the falling away of people doesn't mean the end of the journey. We've got to accept that it is a fact of life that some people will not uh, reach the same destination with the others. The, it's like a long distance train that some people will will travel the whole journey. Other people will travel half the journey. 
other people will just drop at the next uh, train station. Other people will come in and drop in between. Some people you will remember them very well. Some people you will not remember them because they appeared for a short time and then they disappeared. And we've got to accept that it is um, an order of life as God has set it. And as much as sometimes we get attached to people and to things and to situations and circumstances that we may go through, uh, there are times we've got to let go and understand that that's the way life is fashioned to be. As for you, you yourself, when you see yourself on the journey, then it means God wants you to continue. And that's, that's what you need to be uh, focused on. That in, in life, we don't necessarily go as we, we go as I. Because if you, as much as we need each other, and as much as there might be a number of us who will go from one point to the other and drop together, uh, there are others who will not go that far. And we've got to just accept that that's the way life is meant. There are people who will live to be 120 years. There are other people who only live to be 20 years. Um, and in your course of life, there are others who will be born and they will go before you. Um, and that's why it is important to realize that as much as life is about us, it's more about me. Me and God and the purposes of God that you want me uh, to, to do. And uh, understand that God will use um, things that are within your environment to build you, to mold you, to make you, uh, to shape you, and eventually to take you to your destiny. Um, here, now they move from Shittim, they come to the Jordan, ready now to cross over. The new generation, ready to cross over. Um, led by Joshua. Uh, the Bible says, now when they came to the river Jordan, they come to there. The only thing that stood between them and the promised land flowing with milk and honey was only a river. It was only a river. Uh, they were just, and the river Jordan is possibly um, 20 feet wide uh, and where it is widest is possibly um, maybe like uh, 50 feet wide. It's not a very big wide river, but it's a very significant river. Um, that tells you that uh, life is made of stages, and sometimes when you are crossing from one stage to another, you may not be very much aware that already the crossing over is happening. And I, I just want to let us know that we are at another crossing. Okay, in the journey of life, you'll have many, many crossings uh, of different shapes, of different kinds. Um, some are noticeable, others are not noticeable. Um, so, but you need to be keen on yourself when you know that God is moving you from one stage to another so that you can be able to adjust. As I've said Life is like uh, traveling through land with a train. You will go to some places that are very high up in the mountain and it will be very cold. And for that reason, you will need your jacket. There are times you will go down the valleys and it will be very hot. And you will need light clothes. And you will keep on changing these things as you continue. And uh, at the same time, you are going to be needing various things and experiencing various circumstances as you continue. These are part of life and we've got to just accept it uh, so that uh, you don't frustrate yourself and frustrate the purposes of God uh, by just wanting to stay at a, uh, at a standard circumstance. There is no standard circumstance in life. Uh, the standard circumstance is for just particular place where you are in. So accept that and after some time things will change. Uh, we are at a verge of a great major shift right now. 
Um, and we, we need to prepare ourselves to be focused uh, um, within our lives and know that um, it will be demanded of us that we adjust. If there is anything that uh, human beings are uncomfortable with, and especially when you reach at ages like 40, 50, 60, you start to become very uncomfortable with the changes. Um, well, with youthhood, youthhood to them, no more is boring. Uh, they want something new, if possible, something new every day. But you know, as you grow old, uh, you don't want new things. You want to maintain a status quo. You want things to stay as you have known them. Uh, because at that time, you will have grown roots. And uh, any relocation, it will mean a lot of hard work. To relocate from one place to another, to relocate from one state to another, to relocate from one tradition to another, to relocate from one way of doing things to another, becomes a bother and uh, uh, very uh, discomforting. So, but we have to accept that from time to time, uh, God will demand that we do that. And even right now, um, we are at that uh, verge of great change that is going to change our lives forever. Of course, uh, they say uh, change or change will change you. Uh, either you willingly change or change will change you. The problem with coerced change is that it can very easily break you. Um, if you are being forced to change and you don't have a willingness to change, that change can, can break you, can destroy you, can, uh, can mess you up badly because there is no willingness. Uh, that stiff nakedness, uh, it, it causes a lot of pain on your life and it can also destroy a lot of things uh, that are good in you. So it's important to equip ourselves with an understanding and acceptance that change is inevitable. Uh, that is, there is no way you can avoid change in the course of life. There is no way you can avoid change. Um, uh, particularly, we know that within every generation, there must be at least one change in every generation. As you move from one generation to another, there will be a change. Sometimes we have more changes in one generation um, and so on. So that the cultures and the traditions and people's way of doing things are uh, forced to, to adjust, to change. Um, but as for a child of God, we should learn to be flexible. We should learn to be flexible. Uh, because these things will affect us in one way or another. So they move from Chittim, they come to the river Jordan, and God is preparing them for uh, the fulfillment of the promise. I do believe that as the Bible says, all things work together for good for those who love the Lord and those who are called according to his purpose. Every change is meant to bring good to the life of a child of God. For every child of God, every change is meant to bring good. Um, that good may not be automatic. That is, uh, it, may, it may not come in a way you expect that it will be obvious that you will see it as a good. Uh, but even, even losses for God's people, even losses, they work out the purposes of God in our lives. Uh, we know the Bible says that the steps of a righteous man are ordered by God. Uh, when you say the, the steps of a righteous man are ordered by God, it literally means uh, you are never, wherever you are, at an accident. It's, it's not by chance that you are where you are. It's not an accident. It's not a coincidence that things are happening. It means God allowed them to come. God knew they would come and he allowed them to come. And God intends to use those circumstances that you'll find um, in your life uh, to facilitate 
the fulfillment of the promise of God. That is, um, every, every, everything that happens in your life is, is assisting in fulfilling the purpose of God in your life. Um, or it is God's way of answering your prayer or it's God's way of fulfilling his promise or it's God's way of molding you to be a better person. Um, whether it is an increase or a decrease, all things work together for good. If you find yourself in a war environment, it, if you take it positively, uh, as much as you need to, to fight the, 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 the whole experience, it's making you a better person. It's always making you a better person. The problem is when you resist, when you fight, when you, uh, you walk without understanding, um, and you become stubborn and difficult, eventually you'll, you'll find yourself at losses, and whatever it is that God is doing will not benefit you at all. Remember, it is God who brought the Israelites to the wilderness. It's not them who got lost or uh, out of the way and found themselves in the desert. God purposely took them to the desert because there were lessons that they needed to learn uh, in the desert. The, as we know that the program of God was that they be in the desert for two years. It was to be a college of two years in the desert. But when they responded negatively and they became very stubborn, God extended it from two years to 40 years. You can imagine someone who is supposed to be in a university for two years and ends up spending the university in the university 40 years. You know, it seems like a time waste. Uh, that's what happens when you start resisting uh, and refusing to adjust. Um, you need to understand the, the leading of God in what he wants concerning you. So now... Uh, the time had lapsed and uh, the lessons that God wanted them to learn, they believed that they had already acquired that and they were ready to get into the very promises of God. And I believe that as I speak right now, there are many people that God is preparing to bring them into the promised land. For every God's child, God intends to bring us into his promises. Don't look at the circumstances. All the circumstances are working for God and creating an environment that God will fulfill his word in the life of his people. And so, um, the Bible says, uh, when they moved from Shittim, they came to the Jordan, they rested for three days. Uh, because God also understands we are human and at a certain time we need rest. And so they rested for three days. After three days, the Bible says the leaders went around the camp uh, making announcement and saying, prepare yourself, uh, consecrate yourself for tomorrow the Lord will do a great thing among you. Um, in other words, God was to do something new something great, something epic, something uh, something miraculous, something that is life transforming. And I have a feeling within my heart that uh, by the end of this year, God is going to do something miraculous, something great in fulfillment of his promise. Because God has not forgotten what he said. God has not forgotten the promises he gave you. God has not forgotten um, every word he spoke in your life. Uh, he still remembers and he still uh, intends to fulfill every one of those words. And he is in the process. And he is accumulating situations, circumstances, and issues so that they can all facilitate in the fulfillment of the promise of God. So, uh, the leaders went around the camp saying, uh, consecrate yourself for tomorrow the Lord will do a new thing. Um, God never said what it was. He never told them exactly what it was at this moment of time. 
uh, but they were told to consecrate themselves. Sometimes uh, we just have to follow God by faith. There are times we perceive within our souls, within our spirits, as something God is working behind the curtains. He does not reveal it to us because um, God will always do things at the fullness of time. And uh, sometimes God is cooking something so good and uh, he keeps it to himself. He doesn't want to tell us because if he lets us know before it is ready, we may mess up his plans. It is, it is us who are the greatest enemies of God's plans in our lives. Uh, many times if, if God would let us know, we quickly learn to tell the devil what God is doing and planning for us. And so the whole plan of God becomes messed up. So there are times that God will keep things away from us to protect the blessing that is ours. That's why we should not be uh, too quick to demand for God to reveal to us the details. Um, the Bible calls us to walk by faith. We just believe God is doing something good even though we don't know exactly what it is he is working. Uh, and even right now, God is working something good for his children. Uh, even as much as we don't have the details, God is working something special, something precious, something sweet, something nice for every one of us. And I want you to believe that God is working something very good. Uh, something that is life-changing, a life-changing experience. Uh, something that is going to promote you more than anything else. Then God said, um, he told the Israelites, the, the people, the, the announcement goes that uh, when you see the Ark of the Covenant on the shoulders of the priests, then follow it because you have not been on this way before. Uh, God was about to do something that the Israelites did not have an experience of. Something they had never been told. Somebody, something that had never happened to anybody else before. And I want to believe that God wants to do something that no one has an experience of in your life. So nobody can explain to you how it will happen. Um, and then, but the people are told, just follow the priests. That's where now the servants of God comes in. That those who serve the Lord, uh, God will give them the hint of the direction to take. Then the rest of the people are to listen to the servants of God. They are to follow the servants of God. They are to get the instructions from the leaders, uh, the servants of God who serve the Lord at his sanctuary. That's why it is important to uh, keep yourself close uh, to the servants of God. Be in the services whenever it is possible. Uh, seek the messages that you may be able to understand what the Spirit of God is saying. Now, you will note that uh, after they left Shittim and came to the Jordan, uh, the, the cloud that usually would walk before them, uh, would cover them. It would be high in the sky that everybody would see. Uh, that crowd disappeared. And this time, uh, God was not communicating by the cloud. God was communicating by the leaders or through the leaders. They were supposed uh, to listen to the servants of God. Remember, in the beginning, um, when they left Egypt, there was this uh, voice from the mountain. Then the voice changed after they built the Ark of the Covenant. Uh, the cloud of God came and settled on the covenant. And there was a voice that came from the Ark of the Covenant. And also the voice of Moses and the sign of the crowd. But as Joshua took over we see that not happening now again. That now God was communicating to them through leaders. Now, God has many ways of communicating and it is his prerogative to know which uh, form of uh, communication he will use. God can use dreams, God can use visions, God can use physical signs, God can use his word, 
God can use people. And it is important that we be in good contact with all of them. We be alert so that if God is going to speak to us through the Bible, we will not miss it. If God is going to speak to us uh, by uh, perception, whereby you have a strong feeling within your soul that there is something God wants you to do, you, you, then you should not miss it. You should, you should be clear and uh, not confuse it, the, vo the voice of God and the voice of the devil. You should not confuse uh, that voice that speaks within your soul. Then there are times God will speak to us through visions and dreams. Um, and uh, we should not miss it. And then there are times that God will use men to communicate to us. We should be alert that we don't uh, miss it. It's important to explain that all these many ways, uh, they are the devil. The devil also tries to use them. The devil uses people. The devil uses visions and dreams. The devil uses even perceptions. He can, he can be the sound within your heart or mind only to come to realize it was a wrong one. Um, of course, the only way the devil does not speak is in the scripture. Because the scripture is written by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. That's why the Bible becomes the standard of measurement. Uh, in other words, you confirm everything you hear, everything you perceive, even dreams. You need to confirm them with the scriptures. So, that also calls us to have proper understanding of the Bible, the scriptures, so that we can always confirm that it is really God who is speaking to us. Praise the name of the Lord. So, um, they were to follow their leaders and it is important that every Christian have good relations with spiritual leaders um, because there are many times God will use them. Uh, the Spirit of God will inspire the servants of God to speak and this time, because we are in a situation that none of us have ever been before. Um, the situation, the corona situation is one that uh, no one alive has an experience of. Even those who are high up in the government, they are all acknowledging and saying um, this is a shattered path. This is a path that no one has walked before and nobody has an experience of. And it means uh, nobody has a clear word concerning it. But we know that God has. That's why we need to be close to God and we need to listen very carefully so that we don't miss the way. So uh, the leaders tells the people when you see the Ark of the Covenant. Uh, today the Ark of the Covenant is the word of God. And when the leaders lift it up is in the preaching, inspired preaching and teaching of the word of God. If there is anything that this time we will need to be close to is the word of God. And uh, so listen to what the servants of God are speaking. And of course speaking from uh, the scriptures, the holy scriptures, the Bible. So the priests who are to carry the Ark of the Covenant and the servants of God are to lift up the word of God in their preaching and in their teaching. So listen so that you don't get confused, you don't lose the way. Uh, you don't go haywire and so that you can have the blessing of God. We will look at this uh, again um, in the course of this week um, as they continued uh, what happened as they obeyed the voice of God. And I believe that God has great things in store for us. As for now, I want to encourage you and tell you that this is not the end of the road. Yes, there are many scaring uh, news uh, moving around, but our God is in control and our God has good things in store for us. And for that reason, don't be scared, don't be afraid. Um, allow God to lead you and this will be your time of promotion. This will be a time of upgrading. This will be a time God will use this situation to upgrade his people, his children. Be among them that will be upgraded. But it is important that you be alert, that you be uh, where God is working.
Praise the name of the Lord. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. So, thank you very much. I will continue with this uh, the rest of the week uh, as we continue um, in the services. Amen. As for now, I want us to bow our heads for a word of prayer. Our dear Heavenly Father, in the wonderful name of Jesus, we thank you for your word this afternoon. We pray that you bless it to our hearts. And we pray that you cause it uh, to bring forth fruits in our lives. I pray for everyone that is receiving this ministry and this message that this will be a wake-up call to prepare to sanctify themselves because of the great wonderful things that you intend to do. And Lord, we pray that none of us will miss the miraculous visitation of God and the blessings that follows. And so I pray for everyone under the roof of my voice that the Spirit of God will minister to them and empower them and mold them and make them what you want them to be so that you may be glorified in us and that uh, the blessing of God shall be our heritage. We thank you and we bless you to know that all is well and done. For it is in the wonderful name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, we pray. And we say a good amen. Amen. Possibly you are there, you are not born again, and today you would like to give your life to Jesus Christ. It's a wonderful time and a wonderful chance to do that. I'd like to ask you to uh, follow me in this prayer and make this to be your words as you repeat after me. Say, Lord Jesus Christ, I come to you a sinner. Please forgive me all of my sins. Wash me with your precious blood. Today I renounce Satan with all his works. Jesus, I open the door of my heart to you. I invite you into my life. Be my Lord and my Savior. Fill me with your precious Holy Spirit. Enable me to live for you the rest of my days. In your name, Lord Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord watch over you and give you peace. In the name of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh